What's on my desk today? Today we have got the hero archetype. I've got the cards set out. I've just been having a read of the guidebook as well for hero heroine. We can take a look at hero today. This is going to be very interesting. I'll put a little bookmark in there. I've picked out a subset actually of all the different ones that I quite liked for hero heroine. One of the heroes that I've got uh, in the set, and when I talk about him, you'll see that he's been, people in the media say he's got a God complex. We'll take a look at that. We'll see, does he really have a God complex? What's going on there? So because of that, because of one of the heroes in this set, I thought God, yeah, they're, they're doing similar things there. I also thought Destroyer was pretty interesting. Uh, we will do the destroyer just as a just as an archetype. We will look at that warrior. I thought was pretty good, and because of God, I mean Messiah is here, and I just thought hmm, God complex Messiah. That's kind of interesting, but we will take a look at all of these now. Before I get into all of that, I got a question by one of you from last time's episode that I thought was really good. The question was: question What if those two planets involved? also in are also involved in forming other yogas okay so we were talking about the writer archetype last time and i talked about moon and mercury being conjunct or moon being lauded by mercury or mercury being lauded by moon but if you dig around there you'll probably find the person has got some kind of writing gift sometimes i've seen this in practice people are using it but equally there are people who have that placement and they aren't using their writing gift it, it doesn't interest them that does happen so, you know, but time and time again, I have seen that combination in the charts of writers. Robert F. Kennedy, I don't know if I mentioned him last time. He's got one and he he's written books, you know, he's got that combination in his chart. So let's have a look here. This is question, what if those two planets, Moon and Mercury, are also involved in forming other yogas as well as the one for writing? What happens then? So this is a question to me, which is really asking, how do I read a chart? You know, like, because you're asking what's next? How do I read the next bit? But yet, can you read this with other yogas? Absolutely. This is the thing with reading a chart. You will come across conflicts. So you will come across um, that, okay, well, forget this archetype, you know, uh, thing that I'm doing here forget about it just look at the yogas just look at the lords just look at the aspects just look at the you know um it's sorry about sticker roga points everything look at everything each cash file scores everything you look at the planetary wars that are going on in the chart you look at is there a gandanta is there where they're born on an eclipse you look at all these different things and you will come across contradictions that okay well which one is stronger which one do I read more which one do I read less? And some of this process, I don't think I'll ever be able to map it out. I don't think I'll ever be able to teach it. I don't know. Maybe I can. I've never done a course. Well, I have got a little course actually on how to read a chart from scratch. You can have a look at that. That's on my website. Uh, you can you can start there and have a look. But I haven't done a big comprehensive course on how to read a chart no, and, and how to handle conflicts and contradictions when you come across them. Intuition is so important. And this is why I really work with my intuition. I always have a spiritual practice that I do daily. Uh, sometimes it's meditation. At the moment, I am doing um, like a, a 40, I've got a chant that I do. I've got a, you know, my beads, I do a chant every day. Like a, So I'm doing a little something different for 40 days. But, you know, I've always got some spiritual practice going on. I have cleared out my my body of addictions. I don't drink uh, coffee or tea. I might have like one coffee in a month or two a month or something, but that's it. Um, no coffee, no tea, no sugar, uh, no meat. I did eat a bit of meat when I was coming across here from Sydney to here. I did need some something because when you travel it's it's a bit harder but no meat no sugar no coffee no tea no um yeah and intuition is a huge thing for me 
So I use my intuition all the time. And <clears throat> that's the thing that's helping me decide, okay, which which way do I go? Why and why do I, you know, maybe someone has the writer archetype, but I'm not fussed about it. It's not the big thing I'm talking about. There'll be something else going on in a chart that is just so important that I really need to talk about. I'm very guided, I'm very led, and it's very intuitive. One of the reasons I'm enjoying doing this archetypal thing is because we're looking at a chart symbolically. I mean, we're doing that anyway when we're looking at a chart. It is symbolic. It is um, abstract. But what I want to do through this series is I do want to look at things psychologically and when we're looking, for example, when we're looking at a hero, this is a great one. This is, this is, I've been enjoying thinking about this. I've been thinking about it for the last couple of weeks. Um, yeah, what is a hero? You know, and if you have the hero archetype, it will really help you get through any challenges you encounter because you think to yourself, well, I'm the hero. I can do this. You know, and for me, that's the thing that appeals to me about the archetypal series is because if you believe yourself to be a very strong, positive archetype, then you, nothing can stop you. You can do it, you know. And, and the other thing about this is that people understand it. So when I do a client reading, I've often had the feedback it's yeah that's another thing the feedback when I do archetypal type readings is so good like people say you know I loved the reading or whatever but I really loved when you talked about the archetypes and why do people love that because we all know them we know what they mean you know we know what a hero is and the other thing is I want to map modern archetypes in my book here I've got one for wannabe you know, I mean, how much fun is that going to be to look at that? That is something that is very unique to Kali Yuk. We're in Kali Yuk here. And I think a lot of Vedic astrology, a lot of the books that we have, that a lot of the books that we have, they probably come from a much better time. They're probably, you know, uh, I don't know if it's Sat Yuk. I'm not sure where it's coming from. I'm sure this has been talked about on other channels but what I know is that the ancient texts and books that you know we've got our BPHS here and you know we've, we've got our text now I'm I when I look this up I'm looking at an English translation okay and the other thing is that whatever we have on the planet today is probably maybe 50 percent I don't know it's a small percentage of the knowledge and I'm only getting English translations and, you know, I think it was quite an oral tradition as well. I think the things that have been mapped here, you can tell, you can tell that it's coming from a different time and we don't live in the way that the things, yeah, that things are described here. So that's why I'm enjoying going through this process. And if you're enjoying the trip, come with me. But if you feel that, oh, this is confusing me or I don't, I don't know, like it's, I, you don't like it, you don't have to um, watch it or anything. But if it's, if, what I hope is that it gives people food for thought as well, that it's, it's food for thought. It's, you know, and that we're mapping modern times, that we're mapping who we are today you know, and, and how does this system work with who we are today? And the exercise that I'm doing here is I'm mapping, I'm looking for patterns in real life, okay? So that's another thing. This is not textbook work that we're doing here. This is just, I'm just looking at the interface between the stars and what happens in real life. Pure, that's it, stars and life nothing else no textbook in between nothing else this is just patterns that I'm trying to identify here okay so I hope that that helps answer that question about how to use this series and about the work and, and what we're doing here uh, you can see why I think there's a need for it 
I think there is a need for it. It's certainly helping me in my practice and how I'm reading the people. Uh, it helps me a lot. So I'm getting a lot of benefit from the activity, which is, and I'm just sharing as I go along. All right, let's take a look at Hero. So when I read a card like this or when I read what's in the guidebook, it's it's really interesting because so this is coming from quite a psychological point of view. Caroline Mace, you know, she's a great student of Plato and uh, Carl Jung and all, all the greats, right? So she knows all that kind of thing. And what she's written here for Hero is light attribute, passion for a journey of personal empowerment. Yeah, I, I think that's absolutely brilliant. I love the picture that she's got here. It's two people climbing a mountain. You're going to see one of the heroes, two people climbing a mountain. Uh, we're going to focus on the chart of one of those people. So that's pretty cool. And then in here, we've got hero, heroine, see also knight or warrior. It's really interesting. Due to tarot, I did not select the knight in my subset. Uh, I don't see a knight as being a hero at all. But anyway, that's okay. We will explore the knight one day. Confronts increasingly difficult obstacles to awaken an inner spiritual power and achieve a heroic vision that ultimately serves the tribe. So I do think that's all really good but here's where astrology is amazing we've got a part of the zodiac that is utterly treacherous and difficult and to me it produces heroes and that is we all know that treacherous difficult part of the zodiac that is scorpio or the eighth house and so my thinking on hero is that to me Hero is someone who has, to me, this is what I'm seeing. To me, there is a life or death uh, connotation here. There's a, there's a thing about life or death. You face death and you choose life. And that's what I see is a hero. I think that's, that's a definition. And I'm inspired to say those words because of the zodiac because of you know when we look at the zodiac as a hero's journey where is the toughest bit well yeah it's the eighth house you could also say even being born is pretty tough too it's a bit life and death there it really is and we'll talk about that uh, when we look at some of these people but here's my rule okay so astrologically i'm going to say my rule is uh, rahu in scorpio or rahu in the eighth house now why rahu Rahu in the eighth, how I've always seen that is because Rahu is the place where you must go in order to grow in this lifetime. You will waste your life if you just sit in the Ketu house, sit in the comfort zone and you'll waste your life. Okay. You want to be uncomfortable. You want to go into the Rahu house. You want to explore new things. You want to make mistakes. You want to do all of that. Really, really important. So Rahu in Scorpio to me has always been the firefighter who runs into the building that's on fire while everybody else is running out. Okay, that's how I've always seen it. So again, that's archetypal, okay? Uh, I'm, I'm looking at a firefighter going in, everyone else is going out. So who's the firefighter? The firefighter is the hero, okay? Now, it could be Rahu in Scorpio or Rahu in the eighth house. It could also be a challenge to Scorpio. And we'll have a look at that in some of the example charts that I've got. Who are some of the example charts? All right, let me take you through who I've selected this time. Um, I'll edit these in afterwards. I won't switch and we'll just talk about them all at once and then I'll we'll look at the charts. It's just easier. So the first one I've got is Edmund Hillary. Okay, and I'm just seeing now that we've got, you know, the mountain, the two people climbing up the mountain. And yeah, it wasn't just Edmund Hillary. It was, I'm pretty sure his name is... Norgay Tenzing, have I got that right? I think I've got that right. Uh, and Edmund Tillery, he climbed Mount Everest. Okay, and he was the first to do it. And I'm sure there would have been many life or death moments uh, as they went up that that extraordinary, extraordinary mountain. I wondered, I mean, did they meet Lord Shiva up there? I don't know. Uh, so that's Edmund Hillary. We're going to take a look at his chart. We're going to have a look at Horatio Nelson. 
Nelson, I don't know too much about, uh, but I know that the Brits absolutely love him. Let's have a look. Horatio Nelson. I was reading about him on Wikipedia the other day. We've got here, yes, he is widely regarded as one of the greatest naval commanders in history. So his inspirational leadership, grasp of strategy and unconventional tactics brought about a number of decisive British naval, naval victories during the French Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars. And yeah, he's widely regarded as one of the greatest naval commanders in history. I do believe he lost his arm as well. Okay, so talk about life or death moments. Uh, I think he lost his arm in battle or something like that. Yeah, where the attack failed and he lost his right arm, forcing him to return to England to recuperate. Okay, so that is um, something there that we'll take a look at. The next hero I've got is Steve Irwin. And Steve Irwin, gosh, how do you sum him up? Very difficult. He was just a legend, wasn't he? And, and those of you who remember, you know, he's he's passed on. It's so sad. It's so, oh, God, it's so tragic that I don't even know where to begin. It's just what a robbery, like, you know, robbery in terms of his soul was just pinched, taken, like, it's 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 really, really sad. But he was a hero. He was a man who promoted wildlife and he taught everyone how to not be scared of unpopular animals, I want to say, or scary looking animals or, you know, like crocodiles and spiders and all these kind of animals that everyone's scared of. And he just treated them like cuddly koalas you know he treated every animal like a cuddly koala he just loved all animals and he taught everyone how to be fearless really you know he, that that was his mission on on this earth to to show everyone that all wildlife is beautiful all life is beautiful okay and that, so look at that we've got a life theme coming here strong life or death Everyone, people run out of the room. There's a spider in the room. Oh, my God, they're running out. And he's, yeah, the hero, the firefighter, he's the person running into the room. And he's picking up the spider and, and holding it like it's a like it's a cute, cuddly creature. You know, and because all life is beautiful and important and should be should be treasured. So we definitely learned that from Steve Irwin. Charlie Teo. Okay, who is Charlie Teo? Charlie Teo is a neurosurgeon based in Sydney, Australia. I'm pretty sure he's based in Sydney. The footage of the streets on the documentaries I watched, they were all Sydney, so I think that must be where he lives. Now, Charlie Teo is a neurosurgeon that is currently in the media in Australia. And I've been, over the last couple of weeks, I've been really intrigued and interested to study this man it's just been so much uh wow such a such a journey to study him because on my dashboard the documentary flashed up from 60 minutes about dr charlie teo so i thought oh yeah let's let's have a look i've heard his name i'm, I'm going to see what this is about i watch it and i'm horrified because the 60 minutes documentary portrays this neurosurgeon as someone who's just obsessed with money, that he just wants money. So people's lives are on the line. They've got a brain tumor in a particular place where it's very hard to operate. And a lot of neurosurgeons say it can't be done. But Tio says, no, it can be done. I've done it successfully in the past. I'll do it. I know how to do it. I know how to get rid of this type of tumor. And so this is disastrous for all the other neurosurgeons who say it can't be done, you know. And anyway, they've, there have been complaints to the medical board by other neurosurgeons about Dr. Charlie Teo. I start watching this 60 Minutes documentary anyway, and I end up believing it. I think, wow, this guy's a rogue trader. 
then yeah, he he's just, these people are going to die anyway. And he's just like, oh, let me do the operation. And it does, it seems like he's just getting money, you know. Um, it, it seems like he's just, yeah, doing what 60 Minutes accuse him of, which is just preying on vulnerable people and taking their money and and then off he goes kind of thing. Um so that's what the 60 Minutes documentary said. Anyway, my intuition did not leave me alone. My intuition was ringing. It was like, ree, 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 like you just dig deeper, dig deeper. Don't just watch that 60 Minutes documentary. Dig deeper, dig deeper. So, okay, I, I did. I, I dug deeper. And I watched lots of interviews with him. And... It turns out that 60 Minutes documentary, boy, have they done a number on him. He is a hero. He really, really is a hero. Uh, it's extraordinary, you know, of the money that he charges. He said in one um, interview, so one of the criticisms has been that, oh, he charges 100000 for surgery, uh, you know, and that's... That's what he charges. In one of the interviews I watched, he said that, well, the private hospital takes a huge cut of that. He said that we have to pay all the doctors, nurses, anaesthetists, all the different people that are there. We have to spend money on equipment. Um, you know, we have to, it's, it's an expensive thing. He said that of the money that, you know, is the fee, he said, I might get $8,000. When I heard that, I thought, well, that's, that's fine. You know, he should get, yeah, I would think for brain surgery. Yeah, that's, that's, gee, I don't know if, I mean, I don't have that kind of money, right? But like, you get your life back, you know? Um, the other thing is, is is he operating on people who are they're, they're told, okay, it's it's inoperable and this and that. Um, he says that out of 42 people, I think he said it's something like, gosh, I can't remember the number. But what he explained was that out of 42 people, I'm sure, I'm sure it was either 28 or maybe it was 38. If I can find that figure, I will post something on the screen but he said that let's just say it's 28 he said 28 will live and that not just live live for a short while no they'll live a whole big long life and you think about it if that's children that's 28 people the medical system have said to all 42 of them you're all going to die and this man does his work, and even, even if it's 28, right, let's just say it's 28, he saves the lives of 28 people for life. Like they get a life. They get a whole life. That's amazing, right? How, how are people not seeing that? Surgeons from around the world are learning from this man. They're inviting him into their theatres, and they're learning from him. They're learning the techniques. He has a gift. He is totally gifted. And you'll see there's a particular nakshatra. We're going to talk about this when we look at his chart. It's extraordinary what this gift is that this man has. But he is a hero. He's completely a hero, right? Uh, so he definitely belongs in this hero archetype. Mel Gibson, he's someone I've just plucked him out of thin air today. I forgot to bring him up. I'm just going to bring him up on the chart system thing um i'm gonna put him as a hero i know some people might not know much about what's going on here with him he was trashed majorly trashed by hollywood uh there used to be a lot of jokes about him i remember comedians i really love and respect and admire and they all trashed mel gibson and said that he's racist or something or he doesn't like jewish people i can't remember i don't know the exact details but now through having gone down rabbit holes and studied and looked at everything i'm like oh poor mel gibson i know what happened to him they trashed him 
similar to 60 Minutes trashing Charlie Teo. Uh, establishments, yeah, they trash these heroic individuals. It's happened to Mel Gibson. Why did they trash Mel Gibson? Well, Mel Gibson, very early on, we're talking, well, maybe, what, a couple of decades ago, a long time ago, he started speaking out against Hollywood. Now, the reason they didn't kill him, apparently, is because he didn't name any names. But he talked about what they get up to there in Hollywood, and he, yeah, he, he was he was starting to expose things a long time ago. And that's why they made up, I think, these stories about him or whatever they did. Uh, and that's why all the comedians were making jokes about him. I now get it. It's like, oh, poor guy, they've done a number on him. So, yeah, Mel Gibson is definitely a hero, okay, uh, because he's speaking out and it's it's working for him now. Now he's supporting that film. Uh, is it The Sound of Freedom? I haven't seen it. I would like to watch it. But... Uh, as, as tragic and awful as it probably is, I'm sure it's not a nice thing to watch, but I, I want to watch it because I want to expand my mind and know what's happening in reality. All right, so they, they, we've got a lot of men here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five men. How about women? Because when I looked at all this lot, I'm like, oh, hang on a minute. I'm just looking at men, but hero, you know, and we do think of the word hero. We do think of that to do with men, don't we? What about women? And I thought about women and I thought, you know, to me, all women are heroes because they all give birth, okay? And that's, um, so yes, we're looking at fifth house, their birth, childbirth, children, but we are also looking at Aries as well, okay? Um, Mars is important uh when it comes to childbirth and it really got me thinking about that all women who give birth are heroes okay four places away from leo is scorpio all women who give birth they're heroes they're all encountering life or death in scorpio there they're all encountering that to become a mother okay so four places away from fifth house Four places away to become a mother. You face life or death. They're in Scorpio, right? All women are heroes. But then there are some women who will be even more heroic than that. Now, this is this is tragic and it's really sad. But, yeah, I think if, if say, for example, a lady has to um, lose a child or something like that, you know, um, that, and and then and keep living. To me, that's that's heroic. Uh, and so, a couple of examples I have for that are Gaia through Davy. She lost a child, uh, a grown child. Yeah. Um, I mean, any child, whether they're you know just born or you know they grow to adulthood. But I could imagine a child that grows to adulthood that you lose. I could imagine that that's perhaps the toughest thing a human being can do. Um, she had to encounter that and have a look at her. She's got the uh, Rahu and Scorpio. I don't want to alarm anyone, by the way, because there are some tragic things that we're looking at here. If you've got this placement in your um, chart, please don't think that, you know, you're going to have to deal with these things. Uh, there's also Sinead O'Connor as well. Sinead O'Connor, you'll see that she's got a challenge to Scorpio, okay, in her birth chart so we're going to have a look at that as well um, but those those are my heroes that I've chosen now if you've got this in your birth chart I have a lot of clients of mine who've got this in their birth chart is this something they should be worried about no no not at all I mean look at Edmund Hillary you know that, that's beautiful uh, he didn't have to go through anything um, grim or challenging or any of that all my clients who've got this kind of thing they're doing wonderful things they are um with their rahu in scorpio for example they are starting healing centers and they are starting healing practices they are um embarking on a, a spiritual path 
even though, for example, Ketu in Taurus, they might be in some kind of big corporate career or some kind of they're making money, they're making independent wealth. That's the big thing that they're doing. They're the stable one in the family. They're, there's no tragedies befalling these people, okay? So I don't want to alarm anyone. I don't want people to think, oh, no, there's going to be some tragedy or something like that. No, not at all. Um, not at all, not at all, not at all. I'll give you another example. Vandana Shiva, we don't have her time, but when you do look at her at 12 p.m., in a couple of instances, you you know, in D10 and D9, I think she's got Rahu in the eighth. So look at that. She's she's bringing light to dark places. And her whole life is about life. It's about plant life. It's about soil. It's about, you know, let's let's make this world beautiful. She's she's pro-life. It's a very pro-life kind of a thing here. Let's take a look at these charts. All right, I've talked for long enough. Sorry, I've probably gone on quite a bit, but I think it's good to intro the people um, so you can see who they are. I'll try to just, here we go, resize that. Okay, so let's take a look at the first one, Edmund Hillary. Look at that, Rahu in Scorpio. Uh, that's in the 12th. That's really interesting that that's happening in the 12th. Okay, because... Um, I always think of holidays or faraway places, but the top of a mountain is is pretty good. So, you know, Rahu in Scorpio, okay? So we've got that hero archetype there. Horatio Nelson, let's take a look at him. Now for him, I had to dig deep. I found it in his D60, okay? And when, a lot of you might say, oh, but D60, how reliable is that? We've got a time of 9.30 here. Uh, I, I changed the time. If we change the time to, because, okay, let's say, you know, we switch him, we still got Rahu in Scorpio, we switch him to to a little bit afterwards, we still got him as, as Rahu in Scorpio, that's very much what I want to see. This is pretty good right here at about the 9.30 mark is really good because, um, Yes, we can see that, gosh, he would have gone through some tough stuff with the Saturn and Mars here with Ketu. But this exalted sun in the 11th, that is a winning star if ever there was one. It's like this man has to win, you know, and he did. Yes, he went through, he lost his arm even, you know. I mean, that's pretty bad. Um, but, yeah, he won. He won uh, on behalf of, yeah, a nation. We can, yeah, we can see that here. This this could be here. The exalted sun could be here in the 10th. Let's take a look at Steve Irwin. All right, we've got Rahu in the 8th house. Okay. That's a hero. Deshamsha. Rahu in Scorpio. So what he did for a living, you know, was he was running into the jaws of the crocodile. You know, he was, there's this one clip where he's actually, he gives the, the crocodile a bit of a kiss on the lips. It's just mind blowing. I'm watching that terrified and that's happening on a screen. He's doing that in real life. Let's take a look at Charlie Teo. Now, Charlie Tia has got a challenge to Scorpio, okay? He doesn't particularly have, but if if we've got his time, I mean, we don't have his time, but I mean, 12 o'clock, could you imagine? That'd be Rahu in the eighth. That'd be perfect. But this in itself is enough. This here is incredible. Now, do you know what's what blew my mind? This guy operates on the brain stem, Okay. The brain stem, the stem. So you have a stem and then you have like a brain. So like a stem and a brain. Okay. He operates on the brain stem. He is perhaps the only doctor on the planet who can do it. He can, he can go into the brain stem, get a tumor out and save the person's life. But he's going into the stem. Now what have we got here? We've got Anuradha Nakshatra. And that is symbolized by the lotus. This man has a gift. You think about it, the lotus and the stem. The lotus, the brain, the stem. This man has a gift 
and this is Mars in Scorpio. Now, you guys know when I do a transit video and I go all around the zodiac, and if I see like Mars in the eighth house, my advice to people is, well, take the rubbish out. You know, my advice is do clutter clearing, get rid of stuff, get rid of stuff that you don't need. And sometimes with surgeons, people will say, oh, they're just glorified plumbers and things like that. Well, okay, that's one way of looking at a surgeon. Another way, this guy, one of the ways I see with him here due to this is he takes the rubbish out. You know, he takes out what the accumulated stuff he gets it out. He's got a gift for doing that. The other thing about Anuradha Nakshatra is I did a pick a card. I pre-recorded a pick a card. And I so I've got my Nakshatra deck. I made this deck. And I haven't used this deck once in this apartment. Anyway, last time I did a pick a card, a pre-recorded one, I decided, oh, I'll use this deck. I haven't used it for a long time. I shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. What's the first card that comes out? It's Anuradha Nakshatra. And I've been thinking about Anuradha Nakshatra for two weeks. I've been studying this man. I've just been, he's just filled my imagination. It's been so interesting to me. And look at what's written here at work. That, so this is incredible what, what is written here. It says, at work, you excel at figuring out what's hidden from the view of most people. You've got grit and the ability to do the tough aspects others won't touch. That is Charlie Teo. That's exactly what he does at work. This is him. You've got grit and the ability to do the tough aspects others won't touch. No other brain surgeon will operate on the brain stem. And he'll do it. And he's got this Mars in Anuradha Nakshatra. Now, this is lauded by Saturn. And it's really incredible that we've got this constant. Um, it's, it's like an, an echo within an echo, a dream within a dream. It keeps happening. Mars and Saturn, Mars and Saturn. It keeps happening for this guy. And he is dealing with the karma of this right now. So another thing about when you've got heavy Scorpio is that you might have to stop your career. There will be career breaks. He has had to stop his career. And why? It's because Saturn, the rules, it's like these associations um you know medical associations right 10th house 11th house these groups of establishment type bodies are preventing him from operating they're limiting him they're severely limiting him from operating but i think he, there are some operations he can do but it's like the one he's gifted to do he can't do that and that's to operate on the brainstem he's not allowed to do it he's going through saturn mahadasha he's going through sarisati Right. I think it's going to be lifted. I think the ban on him will be lifted. I think when Saturn enters Pisces, he's wondering, he, I'm watching these interviews with him and he's wondering, well, you know, when is this, when, when are these stupid bans going to be lifted on me? He's young. He's got time. He wants to, to do this work that he's really good at. The other thing is that he can't lie. Saturn aspect on moon, also moon lauded by Saturn he, this man can't lie so when somebody asks him can you do it and he knows he can do it he can't say no he can't you know no medical association is going to actually be able to hold him back the man has to tell the truth oh it's just so crazy what's going on in Australia I'm, a, I'm annoyed you know I'm really frustrated about it but all right let's take a look at Mel Gibson sorry this episode is going to be so long uh, let's have a look at Mel Gibson. Look at that. Rahu, Saturn and Mars in Scorpio in the sixth. Oh gosh, look at that. And again, if this is true, yeah, this would be his, look at that, Saturn restricting the man. Again, I haven't looked at his uh, ascendant, uh, his transit wheel. But I don't have time, guys. But anyway, um, let's have a look just quickly. Gayatri Devi. And we'll have a look at some, look at that there, uh, Rahu in Scorpio, you know, Sinead O'Connor. Sinead O'Connor also lost a son, I do believe. Um, but the, the reason she's here, so she's got a challenged Scorpio, Saturn casting aspect in here. She's also got a Rahu, Saturn in Scorpio, in... The Shamsha. And I when I type in 
Sinead O'Connor and the word hero. Yeah, look at this. Russell Crowe says Sinead O'Connor was a hero of mine. The word is continuously being applied to her. Okay, so, so this is where with your predictive ability, if you see these placements, you can say that that person is a hero. It's a pretty safe prediction to make, you know, but it, it holds special meaning here. Uh, because yeah, look at look at this. I mean, these these people have really they have encountered kind of life or death situations. But as I say, it's not for a lot of people who come to me that it's not a life or death thing. You know, it's it's more just pro life. It's more like healing, and uh, they're starting a healing center, and you know, so this yeah, I don't want people to worry or anything. Um. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that's everything that I wanted to share here. I feel like there's something else that I wanted to say. But hopefully this has provided you with some interesting food for thought. You can let me know in the comments below if you have these placements. I'd, re I'd really actually be, that. this is something I'd love to know. Do you have Mars in Scorpio? Or Mars in yeah there was a couple there was something else I wanted to say here you see because hero you might think you might think well okay well what about so what one of you mentioned at the start I, I brought up that question and you if you're watching you might be thinking well what about yogas what about ruchak yoga isn't that a hero no ruchak yoga is not a hero we'll have a look at I looked at um, Valentino Rossi's got a beautiful ruchak yoga I don't see him as a hero I see him as a winner. We'll find out. I don't know where he's going to be in this series. He's going to appear somewhere. Okay. So, but Richard Kyog, no, I don't see Richard Kyog as a hero. Isn't that interesting? Uh, whereas Rahu in Scorpio, I do. Okay. So that's why I'm doing this exercise. Do you see how if like with the yogas or the famous yogas anyway, um, and I'm also looking at modern times too, you know, I'm looking at now more so the other thing i wanted to mention was um yes if any one of you has rahu in scorpio or or no, maybe not rahu in scorpio no no no. i actually want to know about mars in the eighth if any of you've got mars in the eighth or mars in scorpio or something i want to look at i'm looking at one of the things i am studying on the side i'm trying to get more information about is the connection between clutter and trauma there is a connection there and there is a connection because we're looking at eighth house. We're looking at holding on, things bank up, things accumulate. Uh, we're also looking at letting go. So in trauma, trauma is, I think, where people have got whole banked up memories that they just don't know how to let them go. Um, and that's similar to creating clutter in your place. So if you've got Mars in uh, Scorpio or the eighth house, I'd really be interested to hear your thoughts on how that has manifested in your day-to-day -day life from a clutter slash trauma perspective. Anyway, guys, I hope this has been an interesting food for thought type of episode. Let me know how you got on in the comments below. I would love to hear from you and I look forward to seeing you next time.